Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, this is another session of ECP test consolidation project. Frazin is not in. Um, Daniel is going to present the approach that they have in the mobile team. And he'll, he'll explain more, so I will be quiet. Uh, go ahead, Daniel. Oh, sorry, I'm just going to send the link to uh, Shiroz. One second. Sorry about that. Okay, so um, can you see my screen okay? Everything all right? Uh, yes. Full screen? It's working? Sort of. Okay. So I uh, I used the template from DCOM, so in case you're seeing that, wondering what it says that. Um, so my, my presentation is uh, testing using Cucumber, Calabash, and Screen Objects. Um, I'm going to try to uh, pitch a basic uh, approach to testing versus the actual implementation that I used with the, the languages and stuff like that, because all that is uh, actually replaceable using this approach. You can choose whatever um, framework uh, that underlies to interact with your application that you like, and uh, Cucumber is just basically what allows you to run the tests using whatever tools that you find the most appropriate for your project. Um, so getting into it, um, basically Cucumber is very widely root, uh, used. It's uh, over the last, uh, since 2008, it's got like uh, 1,000 forks and uh, 224 releases. Um, it's a tool that runs automated tests using English uh, language. Um, because they're written in plain language, they can re be read by anyone or written by almost anyone on your team. It doesn't always have to require that they are automated. You can have a combination of manual and automated tests using this type of uh, approach. And Calabash is what we use to interact with our mobile applications. Uh, it's just basically what uh, taps the emulators, uh, swipes, etc. Um, and that's the, the lower level uh, framework that we use. Um, so Cucumber, lots of support, like I was saying, uh, lots of languages. Uh, my implementation is in Ruby, uh, since it grew out of the Ruby on Rails uh, community originally. So it was really originally done in Ruby, but it's since then it's been uh, ported to a lot of other languages, including Java, JavaScript, and uh, you can see these are from the official sites. Um, but even the ones that are, there's probably even more that aren't uh, mentioned here, uh, I'm sure. And on top of that, it integrates with some uh, familiar things like Selenium and uh, web drivers. There's a, a water, what like uh, different things that here you can use Cucumber with. So that's from the official site. So for our project specifically, because uh, this is one of the questions on the list, uh, I counted them up and we have a 130 unit tests on Android and these are written by the developers with 60 UI run by Cucumber and Calabash, and on iOS we have 110 and 40 UI. And we just run them with um, some simple commands this way. Uh, these are the UI tests and uh, automated, uh, yeah, UI, sorry, the unit tests. Um, so our U UI tests are interacting with emulators, which are running on our build agents, uh, and also locally if we, if we want to just develop the tests, uh, they're written in Ruby and Cucumber executes the uh, human language uh, tests that are written by both myself and uh, our documentation. Our technical writer also helps out uh, for writing manual tests and et cetera. And these uh, Cucumber translates the human readable sentences into executable code, and it's run basically very simply. It's just a Cucumber command with the profile that you want to run. Uh, the way that Cucumber approaches testing is it has a testing stack, and uh, your project it consists of a business-facing and a technology-facing components uh, a set of components. You have your features, which is what is written in English, or what actually it supports other language like Japanese or Swedish if you want, so it doesn't really matter uh, what the actual tests are written like. And those are built into scenarios, and scenarios, every sentence is a, considered a step and the step is uh, linked to step definitions, which translate how you want to actually do the, the sentence that you're describing. And that, in turn, is linked to the code that runs that uh, step definition and your automation library, which interacts with your application. 
which in our case is uh, Calabash. And in the middle, uh, there's a, the, basically a simpler version of, of that. It's just uh, so step features, which are written in Gherkin. Uh, Gherkin is the uh, human language stuff, uh, so like English, whatever. And step definitions is what, uh, so anyways, it's simple. Um, and in the end, your project looks something like you see on the right with the configuration, uh, folder, features folder, and then you have your step definitions, which uh, is this uh, mirroring what the, the structure of, this, of the whole stack is. So moving on, uh, this is what a simple step, a simple scenario looks like. It has some tags and it has a, a description of the scenario and these are the, uh, the Gherkin format which is given when, then, and um, the, the steps are written like that. So it should supposedly be like a, like a story. You want to tell like a, what's the acceptance criteria of the feature that you want to test is. So you write it out. And all these uh, all these sentences are reusable other, in other tests. So if you make one once and you think it's useful in other places, you can actually just uh, take out that uh, little sentence and put it in, or rearrange the whole thing to make an entirely new test. Um, so that's what just an overview of what it looks like. Uh, so for our stack, this is uh, I tried to simplify everything onto one screen. So sorry about the. Um, confusion here, but uh, so the features are what we just saw in the previous slides. So this, that's the actual uh, scenario being being run. And then, the, like, for instance, then I see the cart is one of the sentences, the steps, and it gets defined in a step definition file. And this is Ruby code. Uh, in my code, I have uh, a, a global object called the app, and then all the other uh, screen objects are uh, inherited, are accessible through that object. So the cart screen is one uh, class. I have other screens, and in every in every class, I have uh, different methods that I can use to interact with that specific screen. Uh, so I never have to refer to actual IDs or anything like that within the step definitions. I always try to get it so that it's sort of abstracted this way. And then once, uh, and then further down, I have the support code with the screen objects. Uh, so for a wait checkout button, for instance. Uh, it's defined as follows with uh, wait for the element, the uh, checkout button to appear. And this is where I get into the IDs of the actual elements on, on the screen. And uh, the wait for elements in turn is using the Calabash, which is what uh, is actually able to interact with the emulator connecting through uh, your, your code to, or to the, the running device. So it actually be an emulator or it could actually be a physical device connected to your, your machine through like a USB cable or something like that. And Calabash is, so these are some examples, wait for and exist. These are some things that it's called. So there's a series of abstractions that are useful because then you don't have to change it in everywhere when something, like let's say even Calabash uh, can change the way that it interacts with your, uh, or like a new version comes out you, and it changes the way that it, uh, that it do, does something, then you just have to change it in one place because you you've wrapped it in your own uh, your own method. Okay, uh, so that's that. Um, these are uh, just to show you some cool stuff about this. Uh, so the tags are really nice because uh, you can filter what you want to run based on what the tags of the test are. And the way that we use our tags is that we describe the vertical. Uh, because in mobile we have uh, several verticals, B2B and now B2C and potentially more in the future. And uh, we can write a test per vertical. And uh, in JIRA when we have a story, uh, we can create a test and tag it with the story number. So later if we can look, if there's a regression, like, oh, I thought we tested that. Let's look, at the, look up the JIRA number and we can look back into the code which tests refer to uh, that JIRA uh, in the past, and we can just uh, track history that way. And you could also have the components, and uh, if you feel like uh, a test is very important that should be passing all the time, you could tag it with smoke, and then we can run the smoke tests like more often than the whole series of tests. Um, and on, in addition to the tags, Cucumber has the ability to uh, run profiles. Uh, so if you have different conditions for different uh, scenarios, like let's say your CI runs a different series of tests and you would want to run on every uh, commit locally, you can do that. Uh, you just you just create them your, yourself and then you just 
is as if you were passing the parameters to the Cucumber command yourself, but uh, you can just, it's just a shortcut. Uh, so that's a little few examples there on the right. And uh, Cucumber is nice because it has screen, uh, HTML reports with screenshots embedded, uh, JUnit outputs, lots of formatters that are available by out of the box with Cucumber. And uh, since I know you guys like Java, I will uh, just, I just wanted to show you that it's possible to do the same thing in Java. So the feature is, is I just got this off of the uh, uh, Cucumber website. Um, so it has like a, an example using, given I'm on the Google search page, and then that sentence is, is matched to the uh, step definition below. And it just goes and uses, goes to google.com. And you can replace this with whatever, uh, you could, I, I guess you can replace it with Selenium instead of a uh, web driver. So whatever you want. Right. This is all replaceable stuff. Um, a question was asked in one of our earlier sessions of the value of uh, having this yet another level of uh, of code, like uh, human readable code. And I think the value is that not only if not everybody on your team is at the same level, it allows them uh, a natural progression path to get to that level. Um, so, for instance, uh, our technical writer has been helping me write manual tests in the same repository alongside my automated tests just by tagging with uh, the word manual next to the test. And then I exclude those from my automated tests. And over time, we can migrate those to automated tests. And it helps work get done and record the test in the repository, even though there was no time to actually get that automated in the first place because uh, maybe I, I didn't have enough time. So the testing skill of, uh, let's say, a non-developer can write Gherkin features, which is the human stuff, uh, readable language. And if you want to better design your test, uh, your support code and automation library, a developer can get into there. And uh, so there's a, a nice like uh, progression between both ends of the spectrum uh, using this abstraction. And um, not only that, like a uh, a person who doesn't can can reuse existing steps to create their own automated tests if the steps themselves are um, modular enough. So if they can be mixed, mixed and matched into a new test, then that's nice actually because you can create a new test for just like that, a matter of seconds. Okay, um, and at at its core, uh, Cucumber is trying to uh, solve the problem of ubiquitous language among the software development because it, it feels that uh, as a philosophy that this the, the communication gets lost from the idea, the concept of a, of, a, of a software idea to the actual implementation along the line. And using the same language from start to finish to describe your feature and acceptance criteria and then translating that into the test itself is uh, a way to get around that uh, lack of communication. And it's supposed to reduce misunderstandings, et cetera. I mean, this is their philosophy. Uh, so they spent a few years trying to get this right. And uh, what's really nice about Cucumber is a few good things is that you get good communication. Um, and Cucumber, as uh, a tool, has already thought about the approach of uh, testing a, a lot. Like, this is their the whole the goal of the tool is to solve a testing problem for for any type of team. And it's already been done, and we just plug in the stuff that we need. Um, we don't have to maintain the actual tool itself. Cucumber is obviously uh, run by uh, like a, a team itself. Uh, we don't have to like actively participate in main, the maintenance of it. And like I mentioned, uh, tests can be written by non-developers. We can have manual tests. We can have a hybrid of some steps are already automated and some steps are not. Or we can have completely automated tests. So it's a nice mix if you don't have enough time to do 100% automation of everything. Um, there are some problems, obviously, with any approach. Uh, so we have there's possible to have flickering scenarios that are due to like some timing. Um, this exists even in my project, uh, which is uh, something that needs to be addressed. Um, maybe sometimes you keep breaking tests unintentionally. Uh, these are like called brittle features. Uh, and sometimes it takes too long to run. Maybe you have too many or too much coverage. You need to reduce uh, what you actually do. Um, 
and the stakeholders don't read our features. This is if the people that you want to uh, like uh, communicate with are not actually interested in the actual testing, then that's an issue also. I think these are actually not specific to Cucumber entirely, but they are something that I've uh, come across myself. Um, so there's there's solutions with these. Uh, you just have to uh, try to work on them. Um, there's some suggestions in the actual book that describes this uh, this tool, Cucumber book. And if you're interested, I would suggest taking a read. Uh, some links and. Uh, that's it for my presentation. I could start showing you um, some actual code, but I could also answer some questions if there's some to begin with. I don't know what's, uh, what the better approach is. Um, uh, do, do you know how long it would take to, to, to show the demo? No, not very long. Okay. I could show you. Can you see my, my screen all right? Yes. Okay, so um, this is just the. Uh, I just I'm just showing a few files. This is Ruby mine. It's uh, so it understands Cucumber completely, and it allows you to run tests within the window, etc. Um, my whole project is Ruby based, so I don't need uh, anything else. But you could use uh, IntelliJ. Uh, it also has a like if you wanted to write tests in Ruby, you, there's plugins, etc. Um, so this is the profile file is a Cucumber YML file, and this is where you define your profiles and the strings that you want to run. So for CI, for instance, I have like an output with a JUnit output for my test or like a report, HTML. This is something you can, like whatever you want, right? You can have different profiles for people that are running it. So we have different people on our team that, so we use different email addresses so we don't step on each other's, we don't destroy each other's carts when we're, when we're working, et cetera. Um, and I'll show you an actual feature file. So this is the structure of my folder. It lives alongside the uh, Android code. This is Calabash. And um, the checkout features, uh, so this is right here, um, what it is, what it looks like. It's just it's English. And um, I could show you, so each one of these sentences are steps. And uh, these are abstract enough so that we don't have to, we just describe a story, essentially. And each one of these is defined by a step definition in uh, checkout steps, which is here. I just show you right here. And um, as I try to, uh, I try to again abstract the execution of the step using uh, screen objects. And this is what you can see here. So I have my main object, which has access to all the uh, classes, and the checkout screen is what I'm working with, the class I'm working with and there's different methods that I execute in sequence to do. And not only that, if you notice that I have the same sentence three times, I just have a different um, parameter, and that's what you see here. So if I have a cost center, delivery address, delivery method. So you can use the same, reuse quite easily uh, what, you, what you are doing uh, this way. And I just wanna go deeper here. So let's select cost center spinner, for instance, in my checkout screen class. So it's down here somewhere, it's right here. So this is an action, and then uh, this is tapping on the cost center spinner, and that's it. Uh, and I actually, I should mention, so the cost center spinner is also an ID on my checkout screen page, which I define as such. So for instance, if this changes at the future for whatever reason, all I have to do is change this one line and everything else propagates upwards towards everything. It's really nice for maintenance. Um, and finally, actually, I could show you, so select cost center spinner, so tap on is also, I'm wrapping uh, some Calabash. Uh, I have a base class, which is useful for everything that uh, is common amongst all the, the screen classes. Like if there's some common action that I, uh, that I feel should be reusable, then I put it here and I wrap it into my own methods that if sometime in the future, if uh, Calabash changes wait for element to another something else, I could just change it right here. Um, and that's it. And then I, I just, I, I run the test and then, um, I don't know if you guys, this is just the emulator we run on and it, it executes inside this device. Uh, I think that's it. That's all I have to show. Okay. 
thank you, Daniel. Uh, I really liked the presentation uh, and everything. So um, let's uh, let's see if anybody has a question. We have a list of questions from Farzine, but before going through them, uh, I'd like to know if anybody else has any question. Uh, Daniel, um, I would like to know um, in in the in your previous slide you showed me a regular expression for the Java method, right? There was a slide. Yep. This one. Uh, here, I'd like to know how you are passing your test data to this method. Uh, is there is there any way you're passing your test data? Uh, this this is not my code. Uh, I got this from the website, but. Um, there's no, you can create steps that uh, pass data if you want. Uh, if you have different parameters, you can put it as like a number, a number, number in the sentence. I'm not sure if I understand completely your sentence, uh, your question, but um, all this is doing is matching your English to an actual implementation of a step. So there's no, uh, the next, what happens next is what you will actually want the test to do. Uh, all it's doing so it's matching a step to the um, execution. Oh, okay, so this means like for for every sentence, and I need to write a new method, or like for uh, do can can this be like reusable? Right. Yes, it is reusable. So uh, I any step that you write once can be re reused in any other test. So if you have different. Uh, like a slightly a test and then a very slightly different test that does almost the same thing, but like just a slightly different, you can reuse a lot of the same sentences that you did before. It's just like a Lego block. I like to refer to it like that. Um, every step is a Lego block and then you construct it in different ways. Uh, so you make one test this way, another test the other way, and maybe a third test has almost 90% of the steps are already automated and then it has a new sentence that hasn't been automated yet, and you construct a new test, you write it out, so then you implement the last remaining step. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Other questions? Okay, I can ask one. Okay. Um, uh, okay, so two questions. One is uh, similar to what Bala asked, I think. Let's say you ha you want to write a test that only works with uh, with the cart. Mm -hmm. Do you need to um, to 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 prepare all the data needed for that test every time? I mean, what I mean is that is it possible to quickly have an order in the cart? Yeah. Um, so. I have, where is it, support? It's basically the, about the test data. Uh, so I have a definition. This, this support folder, when you run Cucumber, but it's it's loaded first. Um, this is just the way that Cucumber works. And you have this uh, this little script. So before any scenario, I instantiate my, my global app. This is what you see in all of my step definitions. And I also have a, a REST class. Uh, here, which I use to delete uh, the cart one before I start any test that has the cart tag. Um, that way, I can make sure that that you can use this 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 way to do what you want before any scenario starts. You can have also tear down, um, and there's another step that uh, I don't have here, but you can say around is uh, another keyword that well while a test is running itself, you can run a test with different data, uh, so one with like, uh, I don't know, sample data, something, and then like, you can run a test itself several times in a row based on a tag or based on any criteria that you want. So there's a lot of flexibility about how you run your tests and the data that you uh, set up that way. Okay, so if I understand correctly, again, for creating the, let's say, an order in, um, <clears throat> in a cart, not well, I'm not sure if the, you call it an order, but then you need to define steps again, and then use those steps here in the page in the 
what do you call these files in the support files, Ruby files that you have, uh, and run them before each test. That's what you're saying. Um, no, I mean like you can. Uh, so for my carts, I uh, I have tests like this, and then I add items to my cart inside the test itself. Or you can have a background step that runs before every scenario in the file. That so if I need a a setup my data this way, then I can run the background. I just define it in the background. So like if every test in a feature file requires items in my cart, then I'll just put it in the background and it'll be executed before that. Or if you want to avoid having to run it before every test, you can use the, the hooks and uh, detect a specific tag and know that it'll, it'll be put into the database that way. Nice. There's a, there's a few ways you can do it. Okay. Before I ask my second question, I'd like to know if anybody else has any other questions. Okay, apparently not. So um, I asked the same question that I asked yesterday from uh, from Fred. Um, how many how, how many people in your team uh, know to, to how to work with Ruby? Uh, right now, it's just me. But um, I mentioned uh, that uh, other people are uh, writing the tests themselves. So I don't know if I could find one quickly, but there are, oh, here's one right over here, right here. There's a manual. This is a test that was probably written by uh, our technical writer or by uh, our previous uh, stagiaire uh, when they were just starting out. Like, uh, if, if there's no time to automate something, then they could just write the test in English and you can see that two of these steps are not defined in my code, but two of them are. And these are reusable steps from other parts of the of the file and others. So you can have a mix of uh, manual and or not yet automated steps and uh, automated steps. So that could be a progression over time where somebody starts out just writing manual tests and then learns the language. That's um, really cool. Okay, yeah. but but uh, the, the the main intention was that if God forbid you get sick tomorrow, yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, if anybody can maintain the test because let's say they want to define a new step or let's say they want mm -hmm. to write the calabash, right. uh, part of it at, at the bottom of the things. Uh, I just wanted to know uh, if there are enough number of people in in your team and in general in in any team uh, we should see mm -hmm. if. Uh, there are enough number of people who can do that. Uh, so because I chose Ruby, and it's a little special on our team because we have th we're using three languages now. So we have uh, Objective C and Swift now, actually four, and uh, so Java and now Ruby for the, uh, the testing. So it's kind of difficult to get across team compatibility of the same language inherently. Uh, but I could have potentially used Java to to start with. Ruby is a pretty easy language to learn, and it doesn't require compilation, which is nice. It's just like JavaScript from Fred's presentation there. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's it's quite um, easy to, to just read uh, out, and uh, it doesn't take a lot of ramp up, obviously, because I was able to. <laughs> uh, so yeah, but you are right. There's just, right now it's just me. Um, last, uh, Victor, who was on our team pre uh, recently, was also, uh, had after a few months had gotten proficient enough to write tests completely uh, um, independently. So it doesn't take too much time to, just to get your somebody proficient, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. So that those were my questions. Uh, I have the list uh, for Zine, but before going through the list, is there any other questions? That's a question. Mm -hmm. Ready. Yeah, just a question. I saw you have a lot of steps. Like, for example, I have an item in my cart. How, mm -hmm. do, uh, how do you know you are not duplicating those stuff in your code? How, how do what's the strategy you're, uh, you're using to make sure it's not there's no duplications? Like the step, I have an item in my cart. If I don't, yeah, yeah. Write for it example, so for example, you have, uh, you have the step already, and okay. some uh, some guy claims. He just writing his own step is duplicated. How to avoid these situations? So I'll show you. There's auto completion. So if I do and and then I just type cart, like uh, I get a list of uh, existing steps. Uh, so then I could look at the one that. Uh, so I have an item in my cart. 
this is something that already exists. I just click it, and now I have this existing step. This is where the IDE comes in really useful. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Um, Daniel, do you have anything else to mention before I go to the list? No, I think that's it. Okay. So uh, I think some some of these questions, or I think maybe most of them, you have answered already during the presentation or after that. But uh, <laughs> I in, anticipated. <laughs> in, in any case, I will just go go through the list. Uh, the first question is: What happens if the UI changes? Yeah, so um, that's where the screen, the off screen objects come into play. So this is totally up to you. Uh, on let's see if I could show it on the checkout screen. Well, let me add something to the cart first. So on the checkout screen, there's all so all these things are elements on the uh, on the page. Um, I could sh so each one of these has IDs uh, in Android, like this box, this this question box, whatever, right? And then I assign something that I need to work with. I, I create an element association with it. So I make my own local variable, and then I define this is what it, uh, this is the ID on the page that it refers to. And then whenever I, I deal with it, I always refer to the, the variable name. Um, and then that propagates upwards towards my uh, checkout steps, et cetera, and then the feature file. Uh, so I only have to change it in one place. So let's say this becomes account payment spinner, I don't know, two, like that. Then I'd only have to change it in that one place, right? And then everything else is is fine. And that's okay. that's that's really nice because uh, maintenance can be hell otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is like page object, but you call it a screen object. And yes. And yeah. yeah. It's, it's equivalent. Cool. Um, I just add a little to this question. To, to this question, of, uh, maybe what he meant was that if they if there is a change, how do you find out if everything is fine? You run the test, and then if yeah. it fails, and then you go and uh, mm -hmm. and, and change the the, the 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 method of that screen, that whatever right. or the element on that screen. But it, there is no other way that you can find beforehand, right? Well, I mean. Uh... We have a CI system that runs uh, smoke tests uh, every commit. So every branch that we have in Git is uh, linked to running the smoke tests. And if those come back red, then uh, so theoretically a developer should notice that and say, oh, my last commit just broke something. And okay. then that's the fastest that uh, we have. Yeah, th that is the process. So it, it they ch there is a change, there is a failure, and then there is a uh, maintenance or uh, yeah, a change in your yep. okay, cool. Um, okay, so the second question is, how many tests do you have? I remember that you have a slide that talks about the, the unit test and the UI. Yeah, where so is maybe it? You could show it again. <laughs> yeah, so we, so we have about 130 unit tests and 60 UI for Android and 110 unit tests and 40 UI for iOS. Okay, I add one more question here. How do you make sure that you're not duplicating tests that are being done at the, at the unit level, which is really, it should be really rare, but yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, the unit tests are very uh, basic stuff. Uh, there's, we don't have that much integration uh, t to begin right now. Uh, this is why I, I did most of the uh, integration slash uh, user story testing to, when the project was first starting out. Um, now we're getting more towards a convergence from both sides. Uh, we haven't really encountered that uh, issue, though. Unit tests are basically testing that the uh, backend calls are working, essentially. And I'm testing that the user flow, uh, the story of the feature is working properly from a user's perspective. So it's a, a slightly different uh, coverage, I would say. I understand. OK. Uh, the, the, n the next question is who, I think you already answered this one as well, who yeah. maintains the test cases? So, yeah, that's that's me. That's you, okay. Daniel, that's the answer, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the next question is how, how, well, how easy is maintaining the test cases? Uh, that's uh, the same thing that we just, like, if the UI changes, this is the, 
this is where the first thing we would look yeah. at. So if an element is not found, so because you're using the screen object, so that the yeah. changes the changes are minimal in your test, which is really. I good. would say it's, it's fairly easy. And if, for instance, let's say the logic of the feature changes, you would just uh, have to rearrange maybe some sort of uh, the steps themselves. Uh, and if something, if you need a new step, then that becomes a little bit more time consuming. But once you have a good vocabulary of steps established in your project, writing a new test actually is, doesn't take that much time because you just uh, construct a new one based off what you've already worked on. I mean, nice. that's, that's really, uh, you ramp up. Like, I, definitely I see it myself. Like, at the beginning, I had to write every step. Uh, I had to, like, like and but now I have a, a really large existing sets of, of steps ready to go. So if I needed to write a new thing for the cart screen, then that wouldn't be very hard. Okay, uh, cool. So the next question, I, also you answered it already. How does the test data cleanup work? So one was using the hooks that you showed, I guess? Yeah, yeah, that's the, the hooks. Where is it? Yeah, so this is before and after, and um, this is, uh, you can even define what your environment looks like. Uh, this is really, there's lots of um, places in your, in Cucumber that allows you to set up exactly the way that you need to set up. Uh, it's built that for that, that way. Okay, nice. Um, the next question is, in order to implement it, what learnings need to be done? Um, I would suggest uh, just, uh, for me, I just dove in and I started learning Ruby uh, that way. Uh, you don't need to use Ruby, as I mentioned. It has lots of support for other languages. So if you already know a language and your project is working exclusively in that language, like JavaScript or Java, then you don't need to learn anything that you don't already know, all you need to do is get familiar with how Cucumber works. Uh, okay, so I, I wrote Ruby and other lines are supported as well, but then yeah. uh, uh, you need uh, Calabash? Calabash is what I use to interact with my application, but if you have a website, then you're not going to use Calabash. You're going to use uh, something like uh, Selenium or Capybara is something that is uh, it's another tool to interact with websites. Um, it's just, there's lots of things that exist out there that hook into Cucumber, or you don't even need to use Cucumber at, at all. You just, there's, it's really a nice approach. That everything is uh, modular, basically. You can use what you want. And, I agree, but yeah. what I'm going to write is, for, for your case and your team, probably, I mean, I, I wrote okay. Ruby, uh, other lines are supported as well, and then Calabash and Cucumber. Does that, uh, is that good? Yeah. yeah. For my team, that's that's true. Okay, cool. Cucumber. Um, okay, the next question is. Okay, this is an easy one. <laughs> Supporting uh, browsers. Oh, which well, is not the case for your team. Yeah, it's not applicable, but it supports. Uh, like, if you hook into Selenium, whatever Selenium it supports, you know, it's whatever tool you use at the bottom. I see. Okay, cool. So the next question is. Can, well, I think it means, uh, can this approach be leveraged to be used by partners? Uh, so that's what I'm working on. I'm trying to get it more uh, generic to, so it's very simple for, like, the idea is that we would deliver our SDK and then you'd be able to just uh, develop our SDK and run tests, but it's not there yet. I don't have, uh, like, enough bandwidth to <laughs> both automate and uh, to deliver it yet, but I'm working on trying to get it more generic so that anybody could just run this out of the box with a few simple commands. Okay, nice. So the next question is, how do you know if the if the test exactly reflects the test scenario? So that, that's, that's the main uh, philosophy of Cucumber is that um, when you're defining the stories in your Scrum groomings or PO is just like just telling you how the feature is supposed to work. Then you could theoretically use that opportunity to write the test even before development in the sprint has started, and that way you have a, a clear communication of what is supposed to happen 
in the different uh, conditions. I mean, I don't even have that on my team, but that's that's what the ideal of Cucumber is supposed to be, where you have a, a PO, you have a developer, and a QA all writing a story together before the story even starts development. And then it fails immediately, obviously, and then uh, you fix it as the sprint progresses. So this is the BDD approach, right? Or TDD. Uh, you meant TDD, okay. So um, the next one is, what is the difference between this technology and YTF? Um, I never used YTF. Actually, I think I tried it for like a day and I was like, no. Nope. <laughs> so, um, I don't have too much experience. Maybe you could tell us what was wrong with YTF. Uh, it was just very difficult to uh, get it to work with, I mean, Android. Uh, obviously, I have a bit of special cases and I was starting with the project out using uh, uh, on the Android project, because our we didn't have an iOS or anyways, it was a long time ago. Uh, okay. I couldn't get it to work, and then I, I saw that this was a very uh, Calabash was a very popular um, tool to use in the community testing Android applications, and that was hooked into Cucumber, and then I just went from there. Okay, I'm just finding it. Okay, cool. So the next, the last one is. What is the biggest issue you faced using this approach? So the biggest issue is that um, some tests are unreliable, uh, they're flickering, and some tests break because of uh, timing issues or network issues, because our app interacts with the backend server uh, across the network, and we know how reliable our network is here at uh, Hybris. Sometimes things take longer than they usually do. So tests fail because uh, they don't find an object when they're expecting one. Like it, yeah. okay. the, it's still communicating, and because of that, the trust in the test set is low. It's lower. It's not 100 percent. There's not absolute trust because we think, oh, it's just a network problem. Oh, I'll just run it again. So that's a big issue actually, and I'm kind of uh, bummed about it because um, it means the developers don't uh, trust what the BI system says. If it's red, like they don't care as much as they should, I feel. <laughs> That's my personal opinion. Okay. But th this is fixable. I mean, you don't, if something is not uh, reliable, then I, maybe it should just be removed from your test set. Maybe your coverage is enough in other places. So th th these are more philosophical stuff. Like it's not specific to the. I'm, I'm writing that you're working on making it more reliable. Okay. As well, at the end. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Reliable. Okay, so um, I think those were qu the questions that we had. I uh, and what time is it? Okay, we're on time, I guess. Um, I I have one more question again because you talked about this the the, the philosophy of uh, behind cucumber. Um, how much? I mean, how much value did it bring to your team uh, in terms of communication? Uh, it's it's good because uh, like I I take the story that is defined by the PO and then I, I write tests that are almost directly translated from the words that he's used and uh, then I and when I run the tests I essentially should be seeing what the feature is and it brings out bugs like it actually has brought that value it it shows uh, so when the developer has misunderstood what it's supposed to be doing then I code it that way. It, 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 uh, I understand. I, yeah. I just make make my question a little more clear. Let's say okay. because uh, you started with this uh, technology, right? Let's say we have a team that uh, we actually have a team that is looking for this. Uh, so we have a team that has a communication problem in in the. They have a communication problem with the team. The PO says something. QA understands something else, and developer understands something else. Right. So, do you think Cucumber by itself? can solve the communication issue or because your team was already good in communication, this also helped in improving the communication? So I won't say that I'm absolutely 100% sure that they could, but the idea is that you're supposed to hash these things out beforehand. And using the Cucumber approach is where the, the three of them get together and then they, they clarify and I've read the people who develop Cucumber have, like, they write lots of little anecdotes about this and they say that they've helped teams clarify this stuff. Um, 
this is the way that they are meant to operate is that you get the idea to the tester and the developer at the same time and then together you um, determine what the actual thing should do. And you say, oh, developers can point out, oh, that's actually not possible. Then you refine it or the tester says this will be too hard to, to test, et cetera. You get that, you get that conversation happening. Um, that's the ideal, right? I don't even have that on my team, but. Uh, okay. No, that, that, that's a good yeah. answer, I guess. Okay. So um, th those were the questions that we had from the list, uh, along with one more question. So any other questions? Do you have anything else to add, Daniel? Uh, no. I, I feel like um, in my ideal world that um, this would be <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, would be done during like the Scrum groomings if we were to integrate it into the Agile, uh, so that during the story presentations, then we could write out the the test ahead of time. But um, that requires a lot of uh, like initial investment of of like uh, trying to be. Let's see, like uh, the PO has to be on board, the developer has to be on board, and uh, so the tester needs to like push this. So it's not. It's not so easy. I tried it once. It didn't sort of work out, but it, it, like you know, it takes practice, like anything. It won't just happen. You need to. Uh, so that's the last thing I would I would mention is that if you want to do this uh, as a, like a BDD process, then you need to try to figure out how to integrate into your into your like Scrum ceremonies. You know. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so on that note, I think we can wrap up the, the meeting. Thank you again, Daniel, for for the presentation. I, it's really useful. Uh, tomorrow we will have another session at 10 o'clock. Um, my understanding is that Stefan mentioned that he will not be available. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the the next one in the list is Giancarlo and myself. Uh, so if he is available, tomorrow we'll do a UI test, the UI test in B2B, which is uh, based on Spring and Selenium. Um, so that's it. Thank you. Thank you guys for attending this session and have a, have a nice day. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.